Well, hello. Welcome back to another video. And today we'll be installing subs into the IC100 this time. If you haven't seen already, the last video we did the speakers front and back. Hopefully that showed you a little bit on how to uh, install those things with the new hardware and a little mod modification, the seats, of course. Um, the video before that, we had the uh, head, head unit install. Um, that head unit install was definitely helpful because a lot of people had problems with the uh, trying to have an aftermarket head unit with the factory amp. It's kind of it's kind of iffy. That factory amp will be a problem. So uh, that video did help out with taking it out, running a different harness straight to it, and now the amp just comes straight from the head unit. So I'll be wiring the amp and the sub from the radio to the subs to the back. If that makes sense. Another way you could do it is you uh, install a high input converter, which is that right there. When I used to have my old subs, take the high input converter, borrow one of the, your speaker's wires, which is high input voltage, run it into the converter first, then it'll convert all of that to a low output, then it'll come out to your RCA openings, then you plug this into your amp and then it will just run like a normal sub. But today, I will be running RCAs from the amp straight to the head unit RCAs, and then it will just wire from there. I kinda like this idea better because it's just, I don't know, I'm really OCD with it, so having RCAs from the amp straight to the head unit, it will just, I'll be able to, like, to tweak the, uh, all the little features the head unit has, I'll be able to tweak the stuff with the sub and all that. So it's been much better to do it that way. But if you do want to do it the trunk way, borrow the speaker wire and kind of just put into a high input converter uh, that definitely works too i had it before um, my head unit and the subs work just fine but yeah let's go ahead and see what we have for today's video we got the kicker 12 with the kicker box we got the uh, kicker amplifier got you a 400 watt rms this wiring kit right here is the uh, focus, here we go. This is the one in the middle. So the 142PA 8BX one, two, the 8 gauge, basically. EFX, there's that Skolshke brand again. Amplifier installation kit. That will come with the power wire, the little wrapper on it, the RCAs for your amp. There's your remote turn on wire, ground wire. Depending what fuse you get, it will matter on what amp you get. This amp, shows it on Crutch Field, recommends a 50 amp fuse with eight gauge wire. So you, you just gotta order all this correctly at once. I'll have all this in the links below, all from Crutch Field. Of course, they definitely have good selection of things. To start things off, let's go ahead and run the power cable from, from the battery through your firewall all the way through the back seat out that center console thingy that's in the back of the seat for uh, you uh, for people who are just starting to put subs in for the first time you will need to drill your um, firewall or if your firewall has a hole to stick the power wire through that'll be fine but uh, with mine I had a drill hole kind of near the like the steering wheel area or the ECU area to get through. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, some people run the power wire and just like run it with the ECU wire. I kind of just like share the, the hole with, with that. Um, some other people run it through the fender. They run it through the fender here and go through the door. And they kind of just like work their way around the car. But I mean, that's, I don't want it to work with the door because you know, the door opens and closes and I don't want the wire to uh, interfere with that type of movement. So I'm going to just tuck it into the firewall and then we're going to just run it straight back. Alright, first things first, we're going to actually look under the, where the, you know, where your foot is at to see like what area is available to uh, drill a hole through. Um, for the people who haven't done the subs before, but me, I'm just gonna look through and see where my old wire used to be at, and then it kind of give you a reference to where a safe spot to drill is at. So, so with my last subs, we kind of just shared it with the ECU hole, 
that makes sense. That's that's it's a rubber boot with the ECU wiring, and we kind of just shared the the little boot. We drilled the hole in the boot basically and just snuck the power wire through. Then I'll go through the these panels all along the side, all through the back, through the back seat, and then to the trunk. So let's go ahead and try to get this new one in right here and take this old and then take this old red one out. All right, before we even start, I went. I already went ahead and took off the uh, some of the panel stuff. Uh, with this, it sits in, sits in like this. I took off the cover for the fuse. You kind of just twist this off, and there'll be this little thingy in the back. Kind of, it'll be sitting back there, and this little, a little groove right there. You take this little piece off. It just twists off like a regular like nut. Twist that off. This would just pull out. This on the side, obviously, you just lift up and then just pop up its clips. All right, so I went ahead and already kind of removed this panel right here. Uh, the way you do that is you just pull this uh, earth piece up. It just comes up easily, move out the way. And you stick your fingers through here or uh, maybe a flathead or a panel remover. Stick that in, leverage it out. This is literally only held in my clips, just like the doors are. I only had my clips, one right here, and then one right up here. And the same with the back, this will just break open. There's your little hole that you can stick your wire through. And then the carpet too, lift it up from here, from here. And this is where you can run your wire through your seat. And then, boom, to that middle seat armrest thingy. So if you come look in your engine bay, go to where your master cylinder is at, it'll be this boot right here. So that red wire you see is the old speaker wire, the old speaker power wire that ran to the back. So we're just gonna take this old red one out and then we're gonna put it in with the, the blue one. After that, you just wire that all the way to the battery. How you wire up to the battery, um, this is a different terminal. Uh, what I did was I kind of just twist that off, put the wire in, twist it back on. Now I'm just gonna wire it all the way through to that hole over there and then I'm gonna just work my way back. And then from here, uh, if you guys do have this factory OG thing, I'll kind of unzip it and put it away. But make sure you open that back piece, the, the plastic back piece in the back so you can put your hand through or whatever, but then you just Throw your wire in there, then it'll come out through the back. Here's that plastic piece I was talking about. They come through the back. Boom, boom. There's your power wire. And then for your ground, find a spot where, you know, you could like, kind of nice flat spot like right here. This is what I did. Um, this spot is pretty flat. I got some sandpaper, 600 grit or below. So 600 or 400 or 100, whatever that you pick, sand the shit out of it, grab, grab your wire brush, and then wire the shit out of it too. So sand it and wire the shit out of it, both of them, to where you can see like the bare metal. This does have a lot of paint on it, um, so it took me a while to get to that bare metal, but definitely get to bare metal so you have a good ground for your amp. Really for your ground, as long as it's to a chassis and it's on bare metal, you should be fine. But um, for the amp, I probably just I probably recommend to have its own ground into the chassis alone on nice bare metal. Make sure your nut or bolt is also nice and sanded off. Also, you don't want any uh, loose connections with this. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the panels and stuff back together, and then show you the ground right quick. And then I'm uh, I will be wiring the um, remote start wire from the head unit straight to the sub. All right, so the speaker wire for the power and the ground is ready back there. Um, now all we got left is the RCAs for the amp and then your remote turn on wire. Um, the remote turn on wire is definitely more helpful and better to uh, hook up when you have a aftermarket head unit because aftermarket head unit will already have a like separate wire on the harness for to plug this in and of course a lot of aftermarket head units will have 
RCA ports in the back so you can hook up um, subs if you want to but uh, just pick a side on which side you want to have the power wire and then for your remote turn on and your RCA's wire them on the opposite side and do the exact same thing if you want to uh, the tucking technique I'm gonna wire these two I'm gonna wire these two through here go down there do a little foot panel area run it along here and of course the same exact thing as the power cable so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done I'll see if, it got, if I run into any problems or anything like that so all right, got the head unit out, and um, with my stereo, there's like these little um, cravings on the side. It says front, rear, and then SW. SW would be subwoofer, so the subwoofer will be plugged into these right here. I'm gonna plug the RCAs from right here, and then run it through the glove compartment to the back. For aftermarket head units, the remote turn on wire will be blue and white. All right, so. I definitely got all the wiring done already. I kind of have OCD, so I kind of tucked it nicely with my um, bypass harness. Zip tied it all on. Um, it has, uh, for me, it has to look nice, I'm sorry. But then I went through here, through here, tucked it under there. Went through the seats and through the middle armrest again, just like the uh, power wire. As you can see, those are the blue cables. I, took the, I put them in here. Went through there. Now, kind of still looks kind of nice and clean, nice and tucked. But uh, for people who don't have the IS300 like I do, the technique would be much different, probably. Um, but it is the same like concept. Kind of just tuck it through panels, um, and then bring it through your back seat. Uh, some seats could fold back. Um, mine doesn't fold back, so I just went through the armrests. Some cars don't have the middle armrest part, so you might have to like figure another way out. Um, but of course, like I said before, uh, the technique of wiring your RCAs from your head unit to your amp, that's one option. The other option is the one I said before, which is uh, borrow the uh, signals from your rear speakers, and then you put into a high input converter, and then from there, your high input converter should have um, outlets for your RCAs and then you just plug your RCAs in there to your sub that's already in the back seat. That um, technique is definitely much easier and much cleaner uh, just because you don't have to run wire, more wire through your car but uh, for me I like to have the RCAs with the head unit so I could tweak it and stuff from there from uh, what my head unit has for its features and stuff. I'll show you guys how to wire the amp to the wires that you just brought to the back of your car. All right, here's the amp. Kicker CXA 400.1, that's what it says, yep. There you go, input output, high input, low input. There's your gain, X over frequency, bass boost, your um, remote knob to turn down or turn up the bass. And here's your going to the sub, there's your ground, your remote turn on, your constant power, and then there's your speaker outputs right here. What's up guys, it's Tony from the future, roughly like four months into the future. Um, the, where we left off was when I was showing the amp and I didn't get to finish the video because the camera died but I got right here how I explained it the way I said it from order was there was the ground wire the remote turn on the positive and then you have your speaker wire and the way it was set up on the amp was it had like two different sections so that positive negative positive negative I just used the left side because I'm only using one speaker so I just put the positive speaker onto the first one, negative from the speaker onto the negative on the amp, of course. And then for the power and ground, of course, got your ground, got your power. This would be that blue wire, the big thick blue wire we went through the firewall. This would be the ground that I wired in the trunk. 
And the, ro uh, the remote turn on would be that skinny blue wire that I had. Basically what the remote turn on wire is, is, is just a, uh, a wire that just turns on whenever you turn your key on. So it doesn't even have to be like a, a specific wire. Just anything really that would turn on once the key turns on will work. So if you could find that. Uh, and the other wires would be the RCAs. Uh, I should have wrote that down, but literally it's exactly what it is. To, you know, plug the white to the white red to the red um, but with my cable they were blue and black for some reason so I just picked the color matched those up to how I matched it on the stereo so that's how you wire that up uh, the subs are not in the IS no more they are, they are uh, in my FRS which you'll find out how I got the FRS in the future video if you guys want to know how the subs sound like just let me know down in the comments below and I will make a video for just you guys so as always thanks again for watching the video Definitely love the support and the little journey that we have going on right now. But um, if, as always, if you got anything to ask or say, throw it down below. You know how I am. I like reading the comments and stuff. So um, if you're new to this channel, definitely subscribe because we do got some more stuff coming for these cars. I still got my IS, still got my FRS. Uh, Angie still got her Evo. I think just got his car. So it does, that's definitely more content for that. Definitely subscribe and definitely stay tuned for more stuff. But yep, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.